Welcome to our That Place and Praise. My name is Ginger, and in this episode, I'll compare two oil-based color pencils, the Coenwer Polycolor and Faber-Castell's Polychromos. I'll also test them out in my Moleskine sketchbook. Polychromos colored pencils are becoming more and more expensive and difficult for struggling artists to obtain. So in this video, we'll look into Koinor as a possible substitute. Is it a good enough alternative for Polychromos? That's exactly what we'll try to figure out in this video. But before I dive in, let me say right off the bat that my opinions are not universal. So you may agree or disagree based on your own preferences and experiences with these pencils. I also want to put it out there that I bought these products myself and I don't get paid to make these reviews. Okay, now while researching these Koenor colored pencils, I was really surprised to find out that Koenor's history dates back to 1790 when the Hardmuth family founded its graphite pencil business. To be honest, I was clueless. Uh, I only knew brands like Prismacolor, Derwent, Faber-Castell, and Karen Dash. If not for a subscriber who a long time ago requested me to review Koenor, I wouldn't have given this a try. But now I'm so glad I did. Let me run through the basic specs first before I swatch out these pencils. Koenor Polycolor is made in Czech Republic. I'm reviewing here their large set of 72 colored pencils, although Polycolor also comes in sets of 12, 24, 36, and 48 colors. Their largest color range has 144 pencils, but I wouldn't recommend that set because it's really pricey. If you you know, I think if you can shell out hundreds of dollars for a 144-piece Koenor set, then might as well just buy the artist grade polychromos instead. But of course, that's just me. Uh, this 72B set, the one I have here, comes with a cardboard lift tab, which I think is where the manufacturer kind of cut corners to minimize production costs. This cardboard isn't even glued to the base of the tray, so you run the risk of sliding it off accidentally. This, set, uh, this setup isn't secure at all, so if the tray slips, you'll be picking up colored pencils everywhere. Um, the plastic organizer tray itself isn't sturdy either, so if you hold it with one hand on one end, it will bend. Okay, so keep that in mind, be warned. Koenor tips are covered with paint, so there's no way to quickly eyeball whether or not the cores are centered. We'll just have to find out as we sharpen if problems arise later on. Many manufacturers cap their pencils with paint to protect the cores from exposure, so this covered barrel is not a surprise. A lot of brands do this. The hexagonal barrel keeps the pencils from rolling off your desk. Uh, the 3.8 millimeter lead diameter is the same as most colored pencils. The barrel is made of Californian cedar wood, which is the best wood for pencils, unlike castle art that uses basswood, which is more difficult to sharpen. You may not know this, but Californian uh, cedar wood is aromatic. That's why they also call it incense cedar, especially since these trees are not only found in California. The wood is mostly reddish brown. It's resistant to rot and it's more tolerant to changes in temperature. That's why it's a premium choice of pencil manufacturers because they can actually just ship these pencils anywhere in the world and not worry about the pencils warping, shrinking, or swelling up from climate change or variations in humidity. Cedar has a fine grain and it's lightweight, so it won't give you hand fatigue. It is also a soft wood that is easy to sharpen and doesn't break into splinters. I, I know Polychromos, Karen Dash, Luminance, and Derwent Studio colored pencils. They use cedar wood and I'm glad to know Koenur does so as well. In terms of light fastness rankings, 
Hohenor discloses nothing in its packaging except that one word on the back of the tin can that says light fast. That's it. That's all you get. You have to dig up a light fastness chart in Google and just to get a sense of how well Kuinur handles the fading issue. The light fastness chart I found dates back to 2017, so that's kind of old. Barring any changes in their pigment formula and assuming this chart is still accurate and current, 53 out of the 72 pencils are rated 3 or 4 stars, which are their highest light fastness rankings. That would be roughly 72, no, 74% of the set, which isn't bad at all. The colors with poor light fastness are mostly the violets, pinks, and some of the yellows and oranges, which are problematic colors for other brands as well. It's not just Koinor. I have to say, though, that I'm not going to put my faith in their light fastness chart because I noticed there was a significant change in Koinor's color names. So I'm guessing their paint formula might have changed as well. Like what used to be called white is now titanium white. What used to be cream is now called ivory bone. Whereas before they had light yellow, yellow, dark yellow, and pink. The recent set I have here has lemon yellow, banana yellow, chrome yellow, and light French pink. So now it's kind of hard to say if the online light fastness, light fastness chart is still accurate. I've heard an artist describe Koinur Polycolor as the poor man's polychromos. And I guess it's because both pencils are oil-based and maybe there are similar similarities in the way they both behave. So let me make some comparisons and let's check this out. One obvious difference is the packaging, whereas Koinur has a flimsy tin which dented easily. Faber Castle's hinged metal case is heftier and feels more sturdy. The elastic band on both ends of the tray make more sense compared to Koinur's cardboard lift tabs. In terms of pencil labels, I like how the Koinur's labels uh, switch in font color from black to white, depending on the barrel paint. This makes the printing more readable compared to the gold overlay on Polychromos pencils. With Polychromos, you kind of have to tilt and turn the pencils to reduce the light glare and help you read the labels. I encountered a few quality control issues with Koinur, like I got doubles of dark violet, which is annoying considering the color palette is already limited to begin with. The set comes pre-sharpened, Although, as you can see, some of the tips had been chipped off. With my tin can dented, I can only guess that my set was dropped during shipment. This just tells me that the metal case and plastic organizers can't provide sufficient protection to prevent the breakage of pencil leads. In making a comparative swatch, I pick the colors that have exactly the same name. You know, one of the challenges of doing a product review is that different brands name their pencils in different creative ways, which makes side-by-side -side comparisons like this kind of tricky. So, so far, the Koinur and Polychromos pencils I prepared here are properly matched, except for the Naples yellow, which from the barrel alone already tells me that the manufacturers use different mixtures and proportions of pigments but still named them, them both Naples Yellow. In this swatch, I'm putting light pressure in the first column, and in the second column, uh, I'm applying heavier pressure. Koinur has a tendency to pulverize under heavy pressure, so you'll notice a few crumbs on this swatch. It's not much though, so don't worry about it. But be careful with smudging. Unlike polychromos that is smudge resistant, Koinur is susceptible to color transfer, and I'll talk more about that later. Now check out the swatches. From this sample, you can see that the paint on the barrels are more or less accurate representations of the actual pencil lead colors. The Koinur pencil marks are just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit undersaturated compared to the barrel paint.
This time, I like to test the pencils on black paper. I want to see how well Kohenor performs on colored paper. Mm, not, not bad, actually. The pigments are still visible, but comparing them with the swatches on white paper, it's pretty obvious that some of the vibrancy was lost. The richness and boldness of the colors diminished. But that's true with polychromos as well, so to me, it's not a deal breaker. Swatching is one thing, but actually working on a piece of art is another. So in this next segment, I'll give you a peek on my painting process and share my personal opinions as I work through it. Well, off camera, I drew two scenes in my moleskin um, sketchbook for this first one. I'm painting it with Kohinoor. Then on the next page, I'll paint with polychromos. In trying out these pencils, I wouldn't use any solvents like Gamsol or linseed oil. I'm going to blend everything by hand alone because the whole point of this video is to figure out how difficult or easy it would be to use these pencils as standalone products because we do have to acknowledge many of us artists have tight budgets and we can only spend so much on materials. If we can eliminate extraneous supplies like Gamsol and the colored pencils can work by themselves, then that means the product has excellent quality. If you can blend well without solvents, then that to me means that the colored pencils have done a good job. So that's what I'm going to do here. A while ago, I mentioned that Koinor smears, and as I was working on the painting, I noticed that some parts of my moleskin sketchbook had green streaks in parts that shouldn't be green at all. So it was then that I noticed that my finger grabbed some of the powdered pigments and I accidentally transferred them in other places. So that's one downside of Koinor. It's prone to pigment transfer. So good thing though that this Polycolor is erasable, so I just kind of just erased my mistakes. The more wax-based a colored pencil is, the easier it is to erase them. So that's the reason why mistakes done by Prismacolor pencils erase almost completely compared to polychromos. But as long as your strokes are light, you can lift away some of the colors. Heavier applications and multiple layers are obviously harder to erase. So take note of that. What else can I say? Uh, sharpening a coiner is very easy. For me, it was problem free. The lead stays pointy for a longer time than say a Prismacolor that flattens with just a few strokes. Although layering is a function of the type of paper you use, how much tooth the paper has and the paper's ability to grab pigments. I found that with my mold skin, I was able to put in as many as 10, yeah, 10 layers of Kohinoor. The lay down, however, feels dry and scratchy. And the final output, I, I mean the painting itself, looks somewhat mottled and rough, even when I've burnished already. This just tells me that Kohinoor isn't as opaque as polychromos. And so I have to keep layering to get more colors out. The good news is that with Kohinoor, I don't get hand fatigue. Not like what I experienced when I painted with Arteza. Of all the colored pencils I've, I've tried, and I must say I've tried so many, Arteza was the most tiresome. Well, painting with Koinur is a lot more relaxing than that. It's, it's actually a pleasure to use. And that caught me by surprise that I actually enjoyed painting with Koinur. Now, because of the low wax content of both Koinur and polychromos, blending and burnishing is a bit more challenging. If you're used to coloring with Prismacolor Premier pencils, you'll immediately notice a difference when you switch to the less buttery polychromos or polycolor. But that's just the nature of oil-based pencils. They really feel drier and harder in comparison to wax-based pencils. And Koinor is no exception. Some polycolor pencils even feel like grains got stuck in the leads and you're scratching the paper with them. And so layering with oil-based pencils, uh, it takes a bit more patience, but you'll be rewarded with amazing results nonetheless. 
so just keep at it. Painting with polychromos is fun. Many artists already know this, that polychromos pencils are top-notch. It's, it's really a league on its own. The colors are bright, bold, and more robust. Lay down is smooth and the painting is more evenly toned, unlike Koinur that looks more grainy and less opaque. The polychromos pigments don't smudge even when my hand kept rubbing on the painted surface as, as I worked. It's all levels of awesome, really. Faber Castle obviously knows its business and their products are trustworthy. The only thing going against it is a price. A set really requires serious investment and depending on where you live, it's not always available for purchase. For me, the price of the polycolor is what will tip the balance in its favor. Koinor is way more affordable. And although the result on my sketchbook is not as bright, vibrant, and flashy as a polychromos, the difference isn't too noticeable unless you put both paintings side by side. You're not gonna you're not getting a bad deal anyway in using Koinor for coloring books or sketch pads. It's still a good good product. Both Koinor and polychromos pencils sharpen to a point without breakage. And that sharpened lead remains pointy far longer than those on softer wax-based pencils. This is especially significant when you're working with fine details because you don't want to keep sharpening every minute just to keep your pencil tips tapered. There are enough representations of colors in the 72-piece Koiner set Although I noticed some of the colors are too close in tonal value to give you variety. I mean, like some of the greens, reds, and yellows almost look the same. All right, I think I've covered up all my essential points and observations. So just to wrap it up, do I recommend the Cohen or Polycolor? Definitely. A hundred percent. Yes, I recommend it because of what, uh, it has many good qualities and the price is really good. But do I consider Koiner Polycolor as a good substitute for Polychromos? I'd say not really. Polychromos still sits at a much higher quality standard than Koiner. I think Koiner can't really replace Polychromos un un unless you're willing to sacrifice some of the pigment quality, light fastness, vibrancy, and robustness that Co Polychromos is known for. But honestly, Koiner isn't such a bad alternative if budget is a determining factor. In fact, once my polychromos is nearly sharpened to a stump, I, I plan to use my Koiner as a foundation for my paintings. Then I, I'll probably just top it up and finish the painting with layers of polychromos. That way, I can scrimp on my polychromos and get more life out of my dwindling set until I've saved up enough money to buy a new one. Alright, that's it for this episode of Art That Place and Praise. I hope you learned a lot from this comparative review. If you have questions, write them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Again, this is Ginger. Thanks for watching.